Hi, here's a quick video of um, an update to the flip-flop circuit I was doing before. Uh, I did a version on a single counter chip, so I needed two chips to do it. I found a dual counter, um, the I think it's 4520 counter that has two counters in one. The, the I was having an issue before where I couldn't get the clock to work, uh, so I was trying to use a 555 timer and couldn't get that to work. Um, but in the end, I fluked across some values that seemed to work. Uh, quite a small value resistor, so the capacitor charges quite quickly. I had to decouple to the positive and the ground. I don't know why that makes sense, but that's what just what worked. And I, I put the, um, the RC before the pull-down uh, resistor. Um, I think because I was using a very small... Um, resistor uh, it tended to put a lot of current through when it was when everything was the pull down was going to there too I think um, but th that's what I'll put the schematic in the link below here's how it works so it's for um, a, either a flip flop looper if you're um, if you've got two loops and you want to flip flop between them you never want to have them on at the same time or how I'm going to use it uh, a dual overdrive um, a dual overdrive pedal where I never want to stack them but I want to put them in one, one enclosure Actually, there's going to be four overdrives in one, but when I get to that, I'll do a video of that. Um, so here's the first side. So that would turn on, uh, pressing one switch and turn off. And the second side would turn on and turn off using that switch. But if you had this one on and you wanted to go to the other one, you don't have to turn this one off and then do that one. You don't have to do that. All you do is you just hit that one and it switches, it switches the other one off. And that switches that one on. And that switches that one off. And it works pretty well. Um, here's the schematic. I'll put, as I said, I'll put a schematic, the schematic in the link below. Okay, straighten it up. Um, this is the schematic. I'll roughly talk through how it works. Uh, those are the switches. Goes through this R, RC network to debounce the switch. That pulls down the clock to ground. So normally the clock is close enough at ground um, that it thinks it's ground. But when you switch the switch, uh, you pull that up to 9 volts, it charges the capacitor across the RC network, and that charges it to high, that's like simulating a high, and as soon as you let the switch go, it goes back down to zero because it's pulled down by the 10k. Um, how this, uh, I'm using a counter, so on bit um, 1 in this case, it either goes high or low, and that's what's turning on the LED. I don't have this in the circuit yet. But it's eventually going to switch a relay, which is going to be a DPD to oops relay to switch the to bypass or go through the circuit, um, and so that either switches between naught and one um, for on and off. Then through this again, I don't have this on the actual circuit, but it's something I'm going to add. It can it's going to it's a double double throw to to decide if you want to have it in flip-flop mode or you want to be able to stack them, have them independent. If you have them independent, this reset gets pulled down to ground. Otherwise, the reset gets uh, connected to this switch, uh, which is again pulled down to ground. But likewise with this, if you switch the switch, it gets pulled up and that sets everything to zero. So if you uh, by setting everything to zero, you set Q1 to zero, which would turn off this. But that happens from switching this switch. So sorry, I should have said this switch is connected to this reset, and this switch is connected to this reset. Um, and other other than that, the other side is the exact yeah, it's this is the exact same thing. Um, connected to th through there and two relays. So those are the two those two independent circuits, which you can choose to stack or not to stack using the double pull double throw. Again, that wasn't all all quite. On the circuit, I was just getting proof of concept. Uh, this bit's missing and the relay is missing, but that should be yeah, it should be all fine for for doing that. So it's it's pretty compact if you see. Um, once I get this laid out properly on a board, that'll be a small board between two foot switches in the in the enclosure, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thanks.